Well, our previous video was all about using our logarithmic properties to expand these expressions. Today, we're going to do just the opposite. We're going to reverse that process and try to condense those expressions into a single log. And that's what you'll see the directions say constantly as we go through these directions are going to say right as a single logarithm. So we want to take, you know, these two expressions right here and condense it into a single log or take these three logs and condense it down into one single log. But that's always our goal is to get it down to one single log. So today, um, without going into those properties real in depth, we're just going to recap the three of them. And we kind of rewrote them just a little differently. We kind of switched around the two sides. Um, so what we're doing is we're saying, if you have an addition sign, right, you've got the sum of two logs, this log plus this log, you could condense them together into this single um, expression where we're using multiplication. Or if you have subtraction, you go, you've got this log minus this log, we can condense them together into one expression where we have division. Or a really, really nice one, if you have this coefficient, okay, attached to the log, you could always move it and put it up top as the exponent that you see right here. So that's a really, really popular one. The way we manipulate these exponents and coefficients is really awesome. So I want to try to rewrite these as a single log. The first thing I noticed is that I do have addition. So I'm thinking I'm going to put them together using multiplication. So I'm going to use a real small step here. I'm going to say log base four, and then in parentheses, I've got two times 32. Now, of course, you're going to multiply them together to make 64. And then you just always keep your eyes peeled for opportunities. That's what I call them, opportunities to simplify. And 4 to what power equals 64? Ah, that's just a 3. So we got a really clean, simple answer here. In our next example, we're seeing subtraction, right? So we're thinking quotient rule. We're going to go log. we got a common log here. And we'll go 4x minus 3 as the numerator. And then we've got this x right there as my denominator. And that's as far as I can go with that expression. Now, our, our next example has some coefficients involved. And we haven't had any coefficients yet up to this point. And once you see those coefficients, this is always going to be your first move. Can we take care of those bears right there? So even if I do see this plus sign and I'm thinking I want to use product rule, I'm going to tap the brakes and I'm going to hold off and I'm not going to use product rule until I've rewritten um, the coefficients as exponents. So this first term is going to be the log of x to the one half power plus the log of the quantity x minus one to the fourth power. And then, of course, we could get real creative and we could rewrite x to the one half as radical x. And you'll probably see me do that in a second. But what I'm really focused on now is that plus sign, right? So let's go. We've got the log of radical x times times x minus one to the fourth power. So we got that product rule going. And um, I think that's the best we could do with that answer right there. That's the best we got. Next one. I do see a minus sign, right? But just like the last example, I'm not going to do anything with that minus sign yet until I take care of the coefficients. So my first priority is always these coefficients. So I'm going to go the natural log of the quantity x minus 3 to the second minus the natural log of x. Now I can take advantage of that minus sign and do my quotient rule. The, the square bracket or a bigger parenthesis, totally optional. Go with your preference there. You've got x minus 3 squared divided by the x, boom, boom, boom. So really all we're saying with, um, with that quotient rule is saying, okay, we're taking this guy's inner function, the, the, the inner function of the first log, and dividing it by the inner function of that second log, and that's how you get your final answer. Now we're gradually building up to some bigger bears and really all I've got is I've got two more examples for you here and I don't know if you, I can't fit them on the same screen, but they look like identical problems, don't they? The only thing that's different is this sign right here. I've got a plus sign on the first one and um, that's a really important deal. So what you want to do is, I guess if I use per, uh, some brackets, I'm going to do those two first and then I'll worry about the third one. In fact, and let me back up just a second. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's just take care of the coefficients first, right? So let's go log of x cubed 
plus the log of, we could say seven to the one half, or we could just say radical seven minus the log of y squared. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my uh, product rule to go log of, we'll say radical seven x cubed minus the log of y squared. Now I'm gonna use my quotient rule. I'm, I'm looking at the minus sign and it's gonna be this inner function here divided by this inner function right here. So that's gonna look like when I'm all done, we'll have the log of radical seven x cubed divided by y squared, boom, boom, boom. So I guess notice how both the radical seven and the x cubed are both in the numerator together and that all traces back to this plus sign. Now, I've rewritten the exact same problem and the only thing that's changed is the minus sign right now. So what you wanna do, and this is kind of a secret ninja tip right here, is I think after I move all of those coefficients, you're gonna see me factor a negative sign out of those two terms. Secret ninja tip, factor out the negatives whenever you get a chance. So, but first and foremost, so we're gonna go log of x cubed minus the log of radical seven uh, minus the log of y squared, just like the last problem, so nothing changed there. Now I'm gonna factor out that negative sign and I'm gonna go log of radical seven plus the log of y squared. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna take care of simplifying what's in these parentheses first. So I'm gonna go product rule. So I've got the log of x cubed minus the log of radical seven y squared and then I'm gonna go division, I'm gonna use that quotient rule and go log of x cubed divided by radical seven y squared. So now all of a sudden, it looks like the same answer almost, you know, the x cubed's on top, the y squared's on the bottom. The only thing that changed is the radical seven's now in the denominator and that's all because of this sign right there. So again, that's a pretty fast and furious lesson right there. I hope you feel a little more confident than you were when we started. And let's go try some examples and continue to build our confidence.